Wait one second. Sorry, what? Rangers are top of the league. But I was told the league was over. That's weird. Glorious. No, I won't give in. I won't give in till I'm victorious. Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we are back with another brand. New video. Today is a video we are here to break down and discuss Rangers hammering Hamilton 5-0. And because of that result and results elsewhere allowed Rangers to go top of the freaking league. And you know what the best thing is about sitting top of the league going into this international break for at least the next two weeks whenever ever you see those cringy, and trust me, I came with cringes, but those cringy videos of the old guys going, can you see the Rangers coming? They're now going to be filmed like this because that is where we are. Well, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be having fun in today's video but just a friendly reminder in case you are new around here if you don't mind subscribing it's right down there doesn't cost you a penny we're doing a little challenge to try and get to 55k so if you can help out that would be absolutely amazing but do you know what else is absolutely amazing is that five star performance from the Glasgow Rangers so let's talk about it and when the game kicked off you instantly saw the entire Hamilton team just shift backwards you know what I mean they had to come forward because it was like kick off but as soon as that ball was kicked you just saw them going okay bang bang parking the bus but thankfully we got that early goal when we discussed that in yesterday's prediction video i was thinking it's going to be another gray hair turner if we do not get that first in early goal but thankfully we did it and the way we did it was absolutely amazing you had greg stewart again being that missing link we have missed for so long between the midfield and attacked he gets his head up and he slides a delicious pass in at jermaine defoe and what else can you say about that defoe finish it's nothing but sheer class he knows exactly what he's going to be doing before he even makes a run for the ball and he just waits for the goalkeeper to come out enough then dinks it and he's already away celebrating he doesn't even need to watch it go into the net because he knows he scored that is the class of Jermaine Defoe and when the ball hit the back of the net for Jermaine Defoe for that one goal that means that he had scored four goals in his last 49 minutes of game time that just about works out as eight goals per 90 minutes over his last three SPFL games and that's our quote-unquote backup striker we are well and truly blessed that we have not only Alfredo Morelos but Jermaine Defoe there they are absolutely so far ahead of everyone else in the country it's scary and for those who want to argue against Jermaine Defoe and Alfredo Morelos being the best two strikers in the country all I've got to say back is facts don't care about your feelings check the numbers but moving away from the very first goal we need to talk about the second goal now it was a bit frustrating about how long it took to come because we honestly had so much of the ball. I mean, we'll throw up the stats in the top left for the entire 90 minutes and it was like that from the first minute to the last. Hamlin offered nothing in this game of football. But there was a little bit of a wait between the first and second goal. But when the second goal came, I could not have been happier to not only who assisted it, but who scored it. And it all comes from Connor Golton. Sort of gambling forward with the football. He passes it out to Tav. And then not only does he just pass it and just admire his pass, he sprints directly into the box and Tavnir whips what he does. A phenomenal cross into the box and the big man's there with a diving header. I could not have been happier and it was moments of quality from two players under fire. And if you've been a part of the nation for a long time or if you've even seen any of the videos in the past, you know I love Captain Tav and I absolutely adore Connor Golson. So when that ball hit the back of the net, I put down my macaroni and I was going absolutely mental. Now we have to jump all the way to the second half to discuss the next goal, but it has to be said that Rangers should have had two penalty kicks in this game of football. Too blatant as you see. I mean, Tavernier gets taken out. Okay, sometimes maybe the referee's going to get that one wrong because it's working so fast. But the second one is so blatantly obvious, a handball. It's frightening. So I don't know what the referee was playing at, but yeah, I felt like I had to mention that. There should have been two penalties in the game of football, which... If you think about it, if Rangers went top of the league and they got two penalties in the same game, that referee would never ever have stopped getting letters sent to the SFA about him. But jumping right to the next goal to break down, we have to go all the way to the 61st minute, I believe, or it might have been the 60th, and it was a set piece, edge of the box, Borna Bear Barisic steps up, and what more can you say about the finish apart from simply world class it is a world class set piece he had one versus Samirn he's now got one versus Hamon and the man has well and truly transformed everything about himself and he's becoming the player we all hoped he would be another faultless defensive performance and again he has that threat from set pieces and he showed it once again with an unbelievable free kick Bonnebear nice to see you son keep that gone so you might be thinking to yourself CJ 3-0 up at home opportunity to go top of the league maybe you'll take the foot off the gas 
But nah, 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 that is not Gerard's way. And within a couple of minutes, we had scored again. This comes from Stephen Davis, who I think certainly deserved an assist. He was, it was a masterclass again from Stephen Davis. And I think he's gone a little bit underneath the radar. He's doing everything, whether it's defensive or pinging passes left, right and centre. But his ball into uh, Jermaine Defoe is brilliant. But you have to give a lot of credit to Jermaine Defoe. I mean, he's got a centre half there basically trying to climb inside his jacks at that point, but he spins him. You see the defender trying to rip the clays off him. He pulls away, and his finish is absolutely brilliant. Yes, it takes a deflection, but it's still on target, and I'm pretty sure it would have been gone in anyway. So whether it was gone in or not, it didn't matter. The movement deserved a goal, and a goal he got. Now, we have to jump about 10 minutes or so into the old future to discuss the next goal, and I feel really bad about this goal because Greg Stewart deserved a goal in the game. His performance was nearly flawless, he skins the defender, like literally rips him out the way, he's one on one with the goalkeeper, I think he's actually trying to lift it, but he doesn't get enough on it, the rebound then falls to Jermaine Defoe, who's always there, right place at the right time, and he smashes it in for his hat trick, but it's funny when you look back on that goal, because Jermaine Defoe was away celebrating, and Greg Stewart's like, ah, oh, I can't believe I missed that, then he's like, oh wait, Defoe scored, and then he sprints away and celebrates, I just thought that was funny, but again, Jermaine Defoe, another hat trick, for Rangers. And with that hat trick moves Jermaine Defoe free clear of the next person in the top flight of Scottish football in terms of goals scored. But what's really impressive about what Jermaine Defoe is doing this season is the fact that he's averaging a goal every 39 minutes and he's top by three goals and he's only played 353 minutes. Oh my sweet 55. But back to finish off the game recap, it finished 5-0, that was the last goal. And it was just a brilliant performance from Rangers. And that is the send-off that we need going into a poor and depressing international break. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The football, unfortunately, takes a break. But I'm sure when the week we come back, it's going to be all fireworks as pair. And with the game recap, normally this is where we jump over and speak about the individual player performances. and speak about a couple of people. We kind of did that today. That was a team performance. I mean, the only person that had nothing to do all day was Alan McGregor. He may as well have got a deck chair out and sat and watched the overall game, but apart from that, everyone was brilliant. I just want to mention very briefly though, Edmondson, he hadn't played a sniff of football for a long time, we substitute appearance versus Aberdeen, but that performance just came in and strolled the entire game. Brilliant for him. But yeah, I'm not going to pull out any other individual performances because I honestly wouldn't feel right to. I mean, that was a team performance. Everyone to a man played up to the standards of a Rangers badge and we saw the result. We sit top of the league. That is because everyone is pulling together. So there we have it ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's the fan recap all done and dusted. Now I'm handing the reins over to you guys. What is your thoughts and opinions on that result? And while you guys are getting your thoughts and opinions out there, we'll jump over to Twitter and hear from the people. Now there's been 1,334 votes, thank you so much for getting involved. 2% votes for other, 11% votes for Stephen Davis, 17% votes for BB, but the far away winner, it has to be the hatchet hero himself, Jermaine the Frickin'. Defoe. So let's see what the people had to say. George writes in, Stephen Davis for me, thought he read the game perfectly, but it was such a hard choice. Cameron Campbell writes in, Defoe all day, just wonderful to watch. Brilliant to see BB performing week in and week out now. Completely agree with that one. Spencer McLean writes, not man of the match, but Kamara deserves special mention for proving that he can be inserted anytime and deliver a top performance. Stuart Ward writes, Defoe, great in front of goal. David White writes in, what a performance. Defoe's opening goal was total class. Bonnebear's free kick was perfection. Golton should be drug tested after that sprint into the box. Great to see Murphy back and the Yank really impressed me in defensive midfield when he came on. Moan the 55. Picking up something that David said there, it was, it was phenomenal. The reception that Jamie Murphy got and he came very close to scoring as well. Hopefully we see more and more of Jamie Murphy, but the old Yank was obviously Matty Polster, who again, continues to impress for the minutes that he has given. It looks like just an absolute animal. Alistair McKenzie writes, Defoe, that's the tweet. Hey, it's Gary writes, and Defoe was outstanding, but Davis pulled all the strings so easy for him. BB and Stewart continue to impress. Bonnie, Bonnie Scott, sorry, writes in, can we please say BB has proven himself seven games and he's been in the top three for all of them? Well, I'm glad someone noticed and is paying attention to the old Twitter polls. Kimberly writes in, Defoe all the way. Also, I love when Morelos came on and he was determined to get a goal. Stuart was brilliant as well, starting to become one of my faves. And something that's very underrated about Stuart is the fact that he can drop in the hole. You know what I mean? He wasn't the biggest name when he was signed. A lot of people questioned it, but his quality is getting the ball at feet 
and his ability to pick out passes. And when he's played at a system that isn't hammer throwing like it was at Aberdeen, you see what he's able to do. And it is the player we have been missing for a very long time. The evil Scotsman writes in, just too easy for Davis. BB was great, but the foe is just too clever for this league. And the last one we will be reading out in tonight's video comes from Frank Donaldson and he writes in, can't wait for Kent and Jack to return and Ojo giving it a well-deserved rest. Barisic has turned into a dead ball specialist and is now Mr. Dependable. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you've heard from the people, you've heard from myself. If you haven't done so already, what are you waiting for? But before we wrap up today's video, I need to give a special mention to the legends on the Patreon's account. I cannot thank you guys enough for all your support. If you would like to support the channel, as always, links for that is down there in the description below. But as always, I've been CG Over 92. Thank you so much for watching today's video and bye.